Hi, I'm Eliza, and today I need you to follow my instructions. So at first the instructions will be visual, so I'll need you to keep your eyes open for that. And then after that we'll move to sound only instructions, so auditory instructions, and for that you can feel free to close your eyes. So, the first thing we're going to do, I have this red pom-pom and this green pom-pom. I need you to focus, first of all, only on the red, okay? Just focus on the red pom-pom. Just follow it with your eyes. Good. Okay, just keep following it wherever it goes. Now, look at the green. Switch to the green. Good. Now red. Look back to the red. And now the green. And the red. Look at the green. Keep looking at the green. Don't get distracted. Don't do it. Don't get distracted. And now look at the red one over here. Don't get distracted. Good job. We get the green. Okay, great. And I have this purple one. It might be a bit difficult to tell with this lighting, but I promise it's purple. Purple and this is orange. Orange. Okay. We get the purple. Now look at the orange. Look at the purple. Now look at the orange. Look at the purple. Good. Now look at the orange. Good job. Well done. Good. Now. I'd like you to look at my nose and now look at my finger. Good. Now choose a spot on the wall behind me over here and look at the wall. Look at my nose. Look at my finger. Look at the wall. Look at my finger. Look at my nose. Look at my finger. Look at the wall. Look at my finger, look at the wall, look at my finger, look at my nose, look at my finger, look at the wall. Good. Now look at my finger over here, choose a spot on the wall behind me, over here. Look at the wall, look at my nose, look at the wall, look at my finger, look at the wall. Look at my finger, look at my nose, look at my finger, look at the wall. Good. Look at my nose, look at my finger, look at the wall, look at my nose, look at my finger. Now I have my two fingers here. I would like you to switch between my left, my left finger and my right finger in your own time. And I'm just going to watch you very carefully as you do this, okay? So just switch between the two. Good. Keep switching your focus between my two fingers. Well done. You've done a great job. You can rest a little bit. Now, I have these two wooden sticks. 
and I'm going to move them around and every now and then I'm going to tap and so wherever I tap I would like you to look at that spot okay so tap now I need you to keep focusing over here keep focusing there even though I've moved the sticks and just focus on that spot until the next time I tap so now I need you to look over here keep looking over here where I just tapped my sticks good good now keep looking at that spot Good, just focus on it. Well done. Good, now look over there. Well done. Good job. Looking in the corner. Good. Just pay attention in your peripheral vision. Good, over there. Good, well done. We will stop that there. You've done an amazing job. So, the next instruction that we're going to do, this is going to be our last visual instruction, okay? After that, we can move on to the sound instructions. Please ignore any background noise. I'm sorry about that. So, I have here this little card. Just focus right in the middle of it for now. Good. Okay. Now we're going to do a little memory test. So, on this card, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight objects, eight shapes, and we're going to see. So let's go through them first of all. First of all, down here we have this hot air balloon. Sorry, it's a hot air balloon. Hot air balloon. Here we have a burger, a hamburger, or a cheeseburger. Maybe it does have a slice of cheese. So I will accept any of those. Here we have a robot. Can you just look with your eyes wherever I'm pointing? So we have the hot air balloon, the burger, and the robot. We have these sunglasses, these pink sunglasses. This hammer. We have this hammer. This is a slice of watermelon. We have this birthday cake, birthday cake, and this, I believe, is a mushroom, a kind of toadstool mushroom thing. Okay, so let's go through them again. We have the hot air balloon, the burger, the robot, the hammer, the sunglasses, the watermelon, the birthday cake and the mushroom. Okay, I'm going to give you a few seconds to just have a look at the card and then I'm going to take it away and you can close your eyes and then I'll ask you to recall as many of them as you can.
Okay, great. So you can now feel free to close your eyes for the rest of this session. You can have your eyes closed if you wish. So there were eight shapes in total. Let's see how many you can remember. Good, 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 good. Well done. It was the hot air balloon, the burger, the robot, the sunglasses, the hammer, the watermelon, the birthday cake, and the mushroom. I need you to keep your eyes closed, keep your eyes closed for this next section because I'm going to ask you to match the sound with the object. So I'm going to tell you all of the objects first of all to make it a little bit easier and then I need you to guess what the sound is. So I have latex glove, I have a ball of yarn, I have a glass dropper, I have a bottle of Victoria Secret body spray, and I have a jar of sesame seeds. Okay, the first is the first object to make some tapping sounds like this. Sounds like this. What do you think this object is? Good, it is the ball of yarn and this sticky tapping is on the label the label around it Good, okay Next object What do you think this is? Good, this one is the jar of sesame seeds. Um, the next object, let's see. What do you think this one could be? Good. This is of course the glass dropper. Okay, the next object we have What's this one? The latex glove, exactly. So, finally, we have the Victoria's Secret body spray. What the word sounds like. to do a few sprays. Good. Is 
actually called a fragrance mist, not body spray. It says coconut passion shimmer fragrance mist. And it's kind of sparkly. It's got glitter in it. Okay. You did a great job with those. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to say the number one and two. And I want you to tell me which is closer, one or two, okay? So, one, two, what was closer? Good, number two, ready? One, two, which was closer? Good, number one. was closer that time. One or two? It was number one. Good. You ready? One, two. Which was closer? Number one or number two? Number two was closer. One, two. Number one or number two? Good. Two. closer. Good. Number one. Amazing. Good job. Now, we're going to do some word association. I am going to say a word and I want you to say the first word that pops into your head and I'm going to write down your answers, okay, on my notebook here. So let me just check that my pen is working. Okay, great, my pen's working. So, just say the first word that pops into your head. Are you ready? Birthday. Summer. Sleep. Orange. Pillow. Chocolate. Good. Whisper. say a list of months of the year and I need you to count how many times I say your birthday month. Okay? So, are you ready? Good. March, January, September, August, December, June, March, July, January, December, August, September. Did I say your birthday month? If so, how many times did I say it? Good. And we're going to go again. Are you ready? So just pay attention to your birthday month. Okay. April, October, June, July. February, November, March, January, December, September, April, July, August, October. Did I say your birthday month? If so, how many times did I say it? Okay, great. And one more time. 
Are you ready? Okay. March, December, November, February, April, May, March, August, January, September, July, July, November, June, October, May, September. Did I say your birthday month? And if so, how many times did I say it? Good job. Okay. The final thing that we're going to do before you can drift off into sleep is a kind of mm, guided visualization personality test, okay? So this is just for fun. I don't know how accurate these are, but we're going to ask you to visualize a castle, okay? So imagine that you are in front of a castle. You're in front of the door of the castle. So how do you imagine it? Do you think it is a simple door or it is covered by plants and is somewhat hard to find or it is a huge wooden door with metal details and it looks a little frightening? Number one, it's a simple door. Number two, covered by plants and somewhat hard to find. Number three, a huge wooden door with metal details and it looks a little frightening. Are you visualizing it? Good. So next you pass the door of the castle and you realize that there is no one there. It is deserted. What is the first thing that you see? Number one, a huge library. huge fireplace with a hot fire burning. Number three, a large banquet hall with huge chandeliers and red carpets. Number four, a long corridor with many closed doors. You look around and you find a staircase. You decide to climb the stairs. What does the staircase look like? Number one, it looks sharp and massive, like it's not leading anywhere. Or number two, it is an impressive spiral grand staircase. After you climb the stairs, you reach a small room in which there is only one window. How big is it? It is a normal window. It's too small, almost a skylight. Or the window is huge so that it takes almost the entire surface of the wall. You look out of the window. What do you see? Do you see large waves crashing furiously on rocks? A snowy forest? A green valley? Or a small, vibrant city? You go down the stairs and you're back in the area where you were when you first entered the castle. You go ahead and find a door at the rear of the building. You open it and go out into a yard. What exactly do it, does it look like? Number one, it is full of plants, grasses, broken wood, and fallen barbed wire. Number two, it is impeccably maintained with countless colorful flowers. Number three, it is a little jungle you can imagine how beautiful it would be if someone cleaned and put it in order. So, now we will go through the results. So the first question is about the door. So the options were, it's a simple door, or it is covered by plants and is somewhat hard to find, or it is a huge wooden door with metal details and it looks a little frightening. So it says the door represents your attitude to new experiences. If you imagined a simple everyday door, you probably are not afraid of any new challenge and will test your luck in new things and situations without a second thought. If you chose the hidden door, you probably do not know what you 
you want in your future and your life, and your life looks blurry and undefined. If you chose the big scary door, then you are probably afraid of the unknown and find it difficult to get out of your comfort zone and try new experiences. Um, I'm interested to see if any of these things ring true for you. So, the second question inside the castle, it was where you pass the door of the castle and you realise that it is deserted, what do you see? A huge library, a huge fireplace, a large banquet hall, or a long corridor with many closed doors? So it says the space inside the castle is the idea that you believe others have of you. If, for example, you saw a library, you probably think that you are the person who supports others and helps them find answers to their problems. A large fireplace gives the feeling of warmth and passion that you think you cause in people. A fancy ballroom suggests that you feel you can dazzle people around you and that you have a lot to give. If you ended up with a long corridor with closed doors, you might feel that you are difficult to understand and other people have a hard time getting to know the real you. The third question is about the staircase. Do you see a sharp, massive staircase, like that it's not leading anywhere, or an impressive spiral grand staircase? The staircase shows the image that you have of life. The sharp, staircase shows a person who sees difficulties in their life, unlike the beautiful spiral staircase which shows how romantic a person is. <laughs> the fourth question is about uh, the window. How big is the window? It is a normal window, it is too small, almost like a skylight, or the window is huge so that it takes almost the entire surface of the wall. the way you feel right now. A small window means that you feel trapped in your life. It may feel like there is no way out of what you are experiencing in this period. A normal window shows a person with realistic demands and expectations of life at this stage. You realize that there are limitations, but the future is here and it looks clear for you. Conversely, if the window is gigantic, you probably feel invincible, free, and able to achieve what you the question number five is the view from the window. So, do you see large waves crashing furiously on rocks, a snowy forest, a green valley, or a small, vibrant city? It says, a view from the window is the overview of your whole life. A stormy sea shows a hectic and erratic life, while a snowy forest is associated with a person who lived isolated and detached from the green valley shows that your life is calm and steady, without much stress and anxiety. Finally, the vibrant city is related to someone who generally lives full life socializing with lots of people. Question number six is about the courtyard. Um, what does it look like? It is full of plants, grasses, broken wood, and fallen barbed wire. It is impeccably maintained with countless colorful flowers. Oh, it's a little jungle, but you can imagine how beautiful it would be if someone cleaned it and put it in order. So this question, it says, The image of the courtyard is the image that you have in mind of your future. So if your garden is neat and shiny, then you feel that your life will be heavenly. On the other, a picture of a promising but neglected garden shows an optimistic person who is worried if they can find the energy to take control of their life and make their future more beautiful. Those who chose a grassy, damaged garden are pessimistic and do not have a nice picture of the future. <laughs> so, I hope you don't take any of those results too seriously or too personally. It's just a bit of fun. I don't think there is that much psychological backing to these kinds of tests. It's a bit of fun to do, regardless. So, you've done an amazing job of following along with me and listening to my instructions. So, well done. And now it 
this time for you to go and rest, relax. Thank you so much, and we're going to count down from ten, and I'll see you another time. Okay, so ten, nine, eight, seven.